Hey guys, it's Fancy and you're watching the Good Wives Network and we are back with a brand new The Crime Lines quick update. So we have been covering the Vallo and Daybell cases for some time and on Crime Lines we are right now covering the Daybell trial as it unfolds. We are in the home stretch of it. The defense has finally just rested their, um, their case. The prosecution put on a lengthy case and now we are going through a couple of rebuttal witnesses and then we should be at closing statements by the end of next week with jury, you know, with the jury getting this case turned over to them at that point. Um, so what we've been doing is going back through and trying to grab the first early parts of this, this case and break it down. And tonight I am bringing you part two of the timeline breakdown. So if you'll remember, we were finishing up that the FBI um, has asked if there were any um, photos of the family taken at the park on September 8th where Tylee, JJ, Lori, and Alex all visited Yellowstone National Park. And they the officials say this is the last time anyone saw Tylee alive. On that same day, Chad signs an application with Tammy um, to increase her life insurance to the maximum amount allowed on the policy. Um, the next day, September 9th, there are phone records placing Alex on Chad's property in the general area where investigators would eventually find Tylee's remains. And on that same day, Chad is texting Tammy saying he pew pewed a raccoon and buried it in their pet cemetery. So, so much for pretending he didn't know what was going on. He's actually actively participating in it by texting his wife to cover up what is going to be going on out there. And remember, Emma Daybell testified that, you know, there was an event that she was looking up meteorology um, reports for because she's so into meteorology and they were going to have an event in the backyard. Interesting, though. Lori does enroll JJ at Kennedy Elementary School on September 3rd, but less than three weeks later, she takes him out and basically says she's going to be homeschooling him. And despite claiming that her daughter, Tylee, is attending BYU in Idaho, Tylee is never enrolled in any school um, in Idaho. So on October, now, Melanie, um, uh, Lori's niece, Melanie Bordeaux, now Melanie Polanski, but at the time Melanie Bordeaux, she moves to a townhouse in the same complex of Lori and Alex. Um, on October 1st, Lori rents a 10 by 10 storage unit from Self Storage Plus, Plus in Rexburg. There is surveillance video from that obtained by the East Idaho News. Um, it shows Lori and a man visiting the unit nine times in October and once in November. Often the man who appears to be Alex comes alone. Um, another visit shows Alex Alex and a man who appears to be Chad during one visit um, and Chad and Lori visit the storage facility together. So on October 2nd, um, so his wife is already moving into this unit, but on October 2nd, Brandon returns from the gym to his Arizona home and he is pew pewed at with uh, the, 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 the things from the pew pew just barely missing his head by inches. Um, and the, the pew pewer was driving a Jeep res registered to the then deceased Charles Vallow that Tylee Ryan had been driving for quite some time. That same day, Lori goes on to purchase a wedding ring on Amazon, um, which is later seen on her finger at her beach wedding with Chad. So, you know, there's there's people dropping like flies your children are missing um your your friend's wife is now gone your husband's gone and oh by the way my nephew-in-law is being shot at but hey let me just go and grab some wedding rings for that wedding i'm about to not attend right that wasn't planned and yeah all of that so on october 9th tammy calls in a 911 call and this is the night of that paintball gun incident um or what she suspects is a person coming up and and shooting at her with a paintball gun, uh, GUN. Now, um, according to Detective Hermosillo's um, actual testimony here on day four, he believes that it is not um, a a paintball GUN. Um, it is actually a it could be an AK um, fifteen that he a rifle that he thinks that this could be. So um, the police are suspicious that this was ever even just a paintball incident. Um, they really believe that this might actually be a full blown attempt on. Tammy's life at this point and they do believe that Alex Cox is the one responsible for it so she posts about the experience on Facebook and we have that for you right here 
So you can read that right there. I did an earlier video about this, but I just wanted to show it to you guys again. She's posting to alert the people in the neighborhood as to what is happening and the experience that she just had. And then 10 days after that incident, um, Chad makes a call to 911 and says that Tammy passed away in her sleep um, at their Salem home. Um, detectives visit the home and the coroner does rule Tammy um, has passed of natural causes, um, but without performing any type of autopsy. Uh, Tammy is buried at the Evergreen Cemetery in Springville just a few days later on October 22nd. The family holds a memorial service in Rexburg the following day. So two weeks after Tammy's death, Chad and Lori are married in Hawaii on November 5th. Uh, they returned to Rexburg over the coming weeks. Chad told neighbors that Lori had no minor children. And police also say Lori told people Tylee died years earlier. On November 6th, the Rexburg Police Department does conduct a welfare check for JJ at the request of his grandparents, Larry and Kay Woodcock. They had not spoken with the boy in months at this point, and JJ is not at the townhome on Pioneer Road, and Lori tries to tell officers her son is with her friend Melanie Gibb in Arizona. Um, please de soon determine, though, that that's not true, and Melanie does not lie for them, um, sh despite the fact that they both try to pressure her into doing so. And we will hear more about this situation here when we get to Melanie's testimony in the uh, trial. So the next morning, November 27th, the Rexburg Police Department um, serves a search warrant at Lori's townhome. Um, when officers arrive, Chad and Lori are both gone. Court documents indicate that on December 1st, Chad and Lori catch an American airline flight to Lihu, um, Hawaii, and the children are not with their parents. On December 6th, Melanie Gibb contacts the Rexburg Police Department and tells officers Chad and Lori called her on November 26th. She says the couple asked her to lie about the location of J.J., uh, the Fremont County Sheriff's Office determines Tammy Daybell's death is now suspicious and her body is exhumed. So on December 11th, an autopsy is performed in Utah and they do not release the results to the public. But we later learn that Tammy did die due to asphyxiation. So on December 12th, Alex dies in Gilbert, Arizona at the age of 51. Um, in a police interview months after his death, um, Alex's wife, Zulima, does speak with the officer. She says a few days before Alex died, he told her a bag of money was hidden in his closet in case anything was to happen to him. He also had begun expressing that he felt he was going to end up being Chad and Lori's patsy in all of this, that they were going to try and blame everything on him. And Zulima did tell police and others that she was actually very fearful of her husband. And there is some suspicion about his death and whether or not his death was actually from natural causes. Um, you know, and we raised in our, our coverage of day four, we began to thinking that maybe Lori has got some sort of medication that she is giving these men that caused them to have heart attacks, um, including Tammy Daybell could have even, we don't know. But but it, interestingly enough, Alex did make a run to the to Mexico for some illegal um, drugs. So maybe, I don't know. Tune in again for episode three of this, of our little update through the timeline coming up right now. Have a good one from the good wives serving up true crime one dish at a time. Bye guys.